generally a feeding response to me is uh, uh, the, the feeding tentacles have to be out, they have to be grabbing food. Um, a slime coating is a good one too. Some type of corals will slime up to be able to allow particles to stick to the slime and make all the slime in. So there's a new reefer or someone that is changing brands. What's the first and easiest thing to do or the easiest products to use from Coral Essentials? Straight away, you have the primary care, which is calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, and they have all the trace elements built in. They're, they're done at ratios that we've tested in the coral farm, and they work. Uh, we can add more stuff to that in the light of trace elements down the track, but you have primary care, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, plus trace, amino and grow, which is in nutrition, and maybe carton. Okay, and in the, so that it need amino and grow, they start with cow, elk, and mag. Yeah. What, That's your building box of your coral. Yes, I get. And what are the traces in each of those three? Each one of those three has pretty much the complete range of traces that we offer as an individual range or individual elements that are designed for the more advanced griefer. And how many traces altogether in, in just your calcium, alkaline, and your mag? Odds. Oh, that depends a few. If that, 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 okay. Yeah. But they're all... In those three primary care. Yeah, yeah. So a new reef for changing brands, about 20 in there. Okay. So new reef for changing brands and or beginner and or expert. It's just like your daily, like that's it. That's your... Yeah. Just so straight You can put on a dosing pump and you're done. That's okay. It. Yeah. All right. So then well, let's just go through each of the main... The way I look at it are the, the big categories of each primary care being first and the yet yeah, the number one the easiest everyone should use it yeah that's your staple that's your bread and butter next would be um the amino and grow yeah is that beginner intermediate advanced or foundries all three and yeah. that's uh, amino and grow are the building blocks of coral tissue so we've got the primary care which is a building blocks of coral skeleton and then we've got the amino and grow which are the building blocks of coral tissue and which comes as that skeleton. Tissue is also color. Is that? Well, you just don't see it, but it's more the flesh side of it. And if we put the colors in, wait, the color, yeah, the coral will put the colors in itself using those as well, but it's more the actual, the meatier part of it. So skeleton is your uh, primary care. Yep. Now we're on to the tissue, which yep. is amino and grow. Yeah. And how do they work when you dose it? Beginner, up medium advanced doesn't matter give us everything yeah whether you are uh, a beginner medium intermediate or fully advanced the all the only thing that really changes is the dose rate if you've got a really low stock tank you just dose a little bit less if you've got a high stock tank you probably end up dosing a little bit more than the recommended which is really stepping not much more anyway can you overdose i mean i yes certainly you can yeah. uh, um on a grow not so much yeah because your corals just suck up vitamins like not so like on the asp. but amino it's quite concentrated so when you're overdosing on that the, you'll notice very first thing you'll notice is the green fill on the glass it's an algae and uh, if you over lose amino you have the amino side of it yeah so um the the dose rate's two drops per hundred liters so it's quite strong okay mine yep um so you don't need to add a lot anyway but uh, yeah, when you do dose, the fir- overdose, the first sign of overdose is a lot of light film on the glass, which is not a problem. You can just wipe it off and then back your dosage off and it's fine. Okay. And obviously amino, but you have amino acids. Yep. And grow, what's in grow? That's a vitamin base. So yeah, it was called grow because um, vitamins, like the growth of coral. So okay. the corals use vitamins to be able to use aminos and they use aminos to grow. So it's a very chain reaction they've got going there. And day nine in between calate, mag, or like what are the, what's the... So amino uptake is best during the photo period. So while your aquarium lights are on. So we usually say to dose amino during the day and grow the vitamin based. We usually say to dose them at night because the corals tend to utilize the aminos by using the vitamins at night. And we had growth period. And when you say dose, is it once or is it throughout the day? Everything is better dose split up 
fine. It doesn't really matter if you're dosing in one hit, as long as it's there. Okay. Is he depriving your system of it completely? That's what we have issues, but okay. Yeah. One dose in the morning before you go to work of the amino and when you get home from work, when you're feeding the fish, put the grow in. Done. Okay. And you can use amino pro even if you don't use the coral essentials primary kit. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's in skeleton tissue, which is primary care, amino grow. Yep. What's the third, um, yeah, uh, nutrients, um, well, that we can control the nutrients. Uh, so, uh, carbon is one we can dis- remove dissolved organics and therefore remove waste before it becomes waste. This is the coral essentials carbon. Yeah. Yeah. The activated carbon. Yeah. And we've got zeolite as well, which is another sort of thing you could look at for uh, waste reduction and ammonia reduction as well. So, well, one thing I always speak to the guys about at coral essentials is the carbon you use is a very high grade because there's a million carbon yeah. on the market and there's yeah. cheap and there's expensive. Yeah, is there a big difference for realistic? Well, what- there is actually. There's a, there is a quite a big difference in carbons. And um, when you're looking at what carbon to use and where you get it from, we, there's a lot of testing goes into it. Out right. of the early stages before uh, we had a carbon, we were going through a lot of testing for mm-hmm. typically for the farm use, we were buying in uh, like one ton bags of carbon to test the product and see if it was consistent and be able to cause supply a consistent product but so testing on the coral farm sustainable reefs and everything but um the the variants in carbons whether they have phosphate whether they crumbled or crumbling after you've warmed to the tent yeah so they they wash a lot of some of the processes in carbon manufacture they wash it with a um uh, i think it might be phosphoric acid so we said again i'll keep Referring back to that whole timeline, it's skeleton, tissue, and then why did you put nutrients before the next, say, traces or CBE or something? Why is that? Well, you so you don't really want to be focusing on um, micro trace element dosing, which is all of your chromiums and uh, vanadium and nickel and iron and all of these tiny micro elements you don't want to be focusing on those and those if you don't have nutrients like nitrate phosphate or phosphorus under control if those are out of control you're going to have awful colors anyway and these other elements are predominantly to affect color so we want to make sure you've got your nutrient control under, under control first and then we can get you into the fine tuning Okay. of your micro trace elements so if they've done those three steps primary care i mean they grow and they have yep. good you yeah, utilizing your primary care of getting uh your complete uh, uh calcium magnesium and alkalinity stable and the uptake yep going well and monitored and checked and you other they me increasing uh well yeah uh, increasing all stable for quite a while that's fine um yeah. Because some types of coral don't actually use a lot of it. So if you've got uh, a tank, an aquarium that is primarily soft corals and larger fleshy polyp corals like your hammer corals and scollies and things like that, they grow a lot slower than uh, the the SPS. So do. your uptake of these primary three elements, those primary three products will be a lot less when you start delving into SPS. The growth is rapid, therefore the skeleton growth is rapid, and these elements or these primary care are sucked up a lot, a lot faster. So we can okay. Uh, so if you've got these corals that utilize these elements more, you're going to experience faster uptake and more uptake of those three. Okay. So after all those pre prior steps have been ticked off, so to speak, what's next? The only now it's the nutrient control. Yet I mean, grow after primary care. What's next? And again, is this beginner, advanced, medium, or just everybody? Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone. I think um, if you want to push the bar and take your reef tank to the next level, then a lot of uh, reefers are getting into ICP testing, and that's where we can uh, use one of the the ICP services around, and there's be quite a few popping up on, around there's some tried and trust tried and tested uh, companies around that uh been doing it for a while so we can utilize that service and we can 
look at the results of your RCP test, and then we can utilize the individual micro elements to adjust levels and really tweak the corals inside of the tank, whether we want to make something more yellow or green or shiny or something. And I asked you yesterday, is it anecdotal evidence or it's actual evidence that certain micro elements can affect I'll coral? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So I can't put you on the spot and let's go down the list. I don't have a list here, but it's just uh, to start from B, bromide. Yeah, bromide is uh, fantastic for, uh, so it's one of those zooxanthellae, re uh, zooxanthellae regulators. So zooxanthellae is a symbiotic algae within a coral. Mm. And we call it, so zooxanthellae is typically brown. So when we think of a colorful coral, brown doesn't come into that sort of a, uh, equation there, but brown is actually a really healthy color for a coral because it has an abundance of zooxanthellae. In an aquarium, we try and strip away excess zooxanthellae or zooks as I'll just refer to it from now. Right. And we use a bunch of different elements and bromide is one of them as a regulator. It regulates the amount depending on how much you dose. The more you dose, the more is stripped out. It essentially bleaches the coral. But in a good way. Yeah. Um, bromide is actually one of my favorite elements for goni, especially glitter goni. Every time you've got the bromide dose, perfect. You know, the glitters just, yeah, it's great. Okay. That's my glitter goni is in fact my indicator corals, uh, which we can get into a later date. But uh, the bromide. Yeah, using corals as indicators for trace elements and yeah, glitter goni is my bromide indicator. So, No other colors for bromide? Not really. It's across the board, like okay. yeah, uh, boron, boron, reds and pinks, reds and pinks. Yeah, I like to keep my boron slightly elevated as well. It also has a nice effect on pH. Okay. Um, again, we're just doing soft the cuff chromium. Um, that's another zooxanthellae regulator, and and uh, I believe it actually has a um uh, effects on vitamin uptake as well. Like it, I have to. Do a bit more reading there, but I'm pretty sure chromium actually affects how the the vitamins are taken in. So as you grow and everything, so they're taken up with chromium. And you, there's only a new product for six months old or something with coral Uh Was always been in trace B, uh, or the the calcium the component of the primary. Yeah, but um, it's very it's new as an individual element. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, iron. Iron is good for macroalgae, so if you're doing a refugium, you can, your iron will be depleted really quickly. In general, even without macroalgae, iron is just sucked out of your aquarium really quickly. The other thing that iron is really, really good for is the color green. Um, and a lot of people have these beautiful toxic neon green corals, and iron really makes them pop. Um, it's also the arch nemesis of people who keep SBS because the slightest amount of iron extra can turn all of their beautiful pastel yellows to be green. And yellow is a really hard color to to get and keep. So iron's one of your overdosing indicators there. So do you don't so you don't dose iron there? Oh definitely dose it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's noticed, but you just uh in, in therapy you come out. So that's why like with the primary care and the the the, the amounts that are in it are what We've tested on the farm and everything, but you can dose more if your aquarium's using more. That's what the, the individual element, you can get that as well. If the coral, if you had a yellowed coral and it does slightly turn green, can it go back to yellow if you need to lower it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And, and SPS especially, because they, they fluctuate their colors with like their trace elements really, really fast. Okay. Uh, buy it on. Iodine, great for soft corals. And um, as a uh, like a disinfecting cleansing or the color in here, like um, it's a tissue builder in soft corals. So yeah, they yeah like discosoma or the mushroom corals and uh, soft corals like leathers and toadstools, cinellaria, they use a lot of iodine. So we tend to have a like at at the coral farm, we've got a soft coral system, and that has iodine on its own being dosed in as well because it's predominantly soft corals where they use a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, 
And also it's great for uh, cleansing corals as well. I say if in a dip situation, you can use uh, the KI3, which is a potassium iodide mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a form of iodide. Mm -hmm. um, and also iodine is in overdosed amounts. It can turn corals green as well. So uh, not a good thing. So there's another indicator is like you could be having an iodine issue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, iodine is the primarily used for soft corals for us anyway. Okay. Potassium. Fantastic for a range of colors, pinks, blues, reds. Um, can you go it? Yes. But it gets a bit, uh, potassium overdose is, uh, kind of like typically noticed in SPS again. So it, I'm going to refer kind of to things being noticed in SPS a lot more when we're referring to uh, trace element overdose because SBS are the first corals that are affected. They're very react, very reactive and delicate and silky at the slightest changes. And so when we're talking about potassium, they would go uh, a little bit tied with nitrate here, but we can get burnt SBS tips and sometimes uh, the base of corals tends to peel up a little bit when you've overdosed. Uh, otherwise, it's one of the most important, like it's hugely important to be kept and continuously dosed. Um, it's one of the big components in coral skeleton as well. So they it, or in it's in you one of your primary cares. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All of these. Yeah. All of these elements are in the primary care that built in, in, in ratios that we've found therapeutic to be all yeah. useful and therapeutic of corals. So that you are. Okay. Um, but yeah, the uh, potassium is like a, a macro element almost because it's in large parts per million. We keep it around 400 ppm. Calcium is around 420 ppm. It's it's up there with the levels that we'd keep primary care. Okay. Um, molybdenum. Uh, excellent for macroalgies. Um, pretty much... Um, Pretty much all we really use that for, to be honest. So no corals really. Yeah, at, at this stage, like with, um, with the entire, uh, I don't know, like farming of corals and 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 what's there to learn. We're always learning things like that. So, um, we know that these elements are important, and so far we kind of just use them for the macroalgae and those other things. But when we do have mo. Well, can okay, for the molecule. Um, I don't know really short them when they're tub and tides. <laughs> um but yeah, the uh when we have our and when we check, we do notice that corals are generally happier and nicer and whether you can correlate that directly to MO or that all of the other elements in check as well. But um we're always testing corals or testing on corals and testing elements and and that's so we're continuously learning and we might be able to pinpoint exactly what MO does in the near future because we have a broad range of corals that we can test on and okay. yeah. Um another new trace you just brought up but I'm sure is in your traces now is um manganese. Yeah, manganese is excellent. Okay. So why didn't you guys release it like through as the individual yeah, well, yeah. um to learn more and therefore well the reason for the individual elements is the cult, the, the rise in people doing ICP tests. It's got, yeah, so we were finding that people uh, that kept certain species of coral, for for example, acans or microbusa, what how it says, tiny red corals, and gonies especially, really do suck down manganese to use that was an example. So in those particular dominated tanks that has those corals will see depleted amounts more than someone who just has uh, soft corals. <laughs> so those individual element ranges were brought out so that people using an ICP test service can grab those uh, results back and pretty much adjust everything they want. They can add that directly to their primary care range and dose it as per their aquarium needs. Because all the firms are different. Like you, know, you can't, you can't carbon copy an aquarium from house to house or with a facility to facility. Even though we just tested and everything on a coral farm, there's still differences between everyone's system. Mm -hmm. Okay, but manganese is one of your 
good to yeah it's great so yeah a lot of a lot of people to i think it's overall going up for health okay um it, it's a it's great for keeping them extended and um and it's tired heavily with iron as well from mm-hmm. mahinis it's um said so, uh i suspect it could have something to do with reds but i haven't quite really tested that properly okay but yeah. but he reds in lps specifically okay uh the nickel Nifil's another Zizanthele regulator, um, and also uh, vitamin uptake as well. Um, so when your vitamins tend to be used better when you've got nickel in check, and it's such a minute amount, it is not worth chasing numbers on that one. Like if you're getting an ICP test, it's always zero. You, that's what you want. Okay. You don't want values of nickel, but you, you just want to yeah. You just want to know that you're adding it. Okay. Having a zero or undetectable ICP result on nickel is great, as long as you're adding it as well. That means your aquarium's using what you've added, and it's good. Okay, zinc. Zinc, another Zinc-Delay regulator. Uh, we put a lot of those in then, uh, in small amounts, each different one, Yep. Um, because everything in moderation, especially Zinc-Delay, because it's, that's what everyone wants is to keep your corals bright. Okay. Um, we're getting, hopefully we're getting towards the end. I'm, I'm starting to wrap my brain now. Uh, strontium. Strontium. That is another excellent one. Even though it's a micro trace element, it's one of the biggest building blocks of coral skeleton. So um, it's used as a uh, binder with the calcium and it's used to strengthen the, tip, the, the skeleton itself. So as the corals pre- precipitate and build the skeleton, they suck up the strontium with it and they bind it all together. It's like cement. Wow, I see it. So we've been selling that for a while, the, the strontium, yeah. but it doesn't move as much as everything else, and it's in a 100 mil bottle. Yeah. And why is that in a 100 mil compared to the 50? It's hard to get the concentration down. Uh, so to keep it the same concentration as the smaller models, because it's not as soluble in water, basically. Okay. So to keep it the same concentration and the same strength, as that it, we have to double the size of the bottle, basically. So there's obviously something that the community doesn't know if we're not selling much of it, we sell a lot. Yeah. Look, Strontium is probably one of the least that we sell. Is there something you will give to the community to, to start saying, you know, like, hey, pay attention to this? Yeah, you can definitely keep going. Is it every day, every ICP test? Well, it's fit. well, first of all, it's built into the primary care range. Okay, so... And and we does not have too many people that have an issue with strontium. Okay. Um, so we feel that the range that we put in there is pretty good fit for all, mm-hmm. but it can change and people tend to, the chase numbers are already years ago. I was playing with strontium at uh, levels of 12 parts per million instead of around the eight that's recommended. Mm-hmm. And years, it was mainly when I started noticing brittle coral skeletons. I know it. So if you've got a fish that likes to swim close to corals and you can actually get branches knocked off on SPS. So when you start seeing that, you just got to have a look at your strontium levels. If something feels brittle or powdery, it means like there's not enough glue in the, in the, in the coral skeleton sort of thing. Okay. Uh, a fluoride. Uh, this is a thello regulator as well. Uh, again, and uh, also uh, it's another coral skeleton element and okay. it's in there i think it's, it's precipitated as another like calcium it's precipitated as something else but it's okay yeah it's an odd one it's also not readily testable in an icp test yeah so they use a different machine to test that okay but um yeah some of the services do still test that for you okay so we've done primary care skeletal skeleton of the coral yeah we've done the amino grow which is the tissue of the coral you felt right we've done nutrient control carbon zeolite we've done the traces now we can also add nitrate up and phosphate up to nutrient control too because you don't want either be too low so they and i've had two products there is nitrate up and phosphate up. They are literally raising nutrients yeah. in case they are bottomed out or too low. Or you need to stabilize them because there's a nice ratio that we need here. 
of, of um, you need just a little bit of each. And uh, is that that 10, one to 10 ratio? Does that work? A lot of reef will change it. So a lot of reefers used to run by this, it's what is Renfield ratio. Yeah. Uh, the one to 16 oh. and something else. Yeah. And then it's just changed. And there are so many different opinions on the, this topic. We run a slightly different ratio for a week and then we change it a bit. Like we were, our nitrate and phosphate isn't really stable on the coral farm, but, um, some people do religiously run these, um, these ratios and they swear by it. And that's why those two products are there is so you can balance them out. Can you strip out too much nutrients with carbon or anything uh, about them? I really, if you use too much, yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, you could potentially put, uh, a five kilo bucket or something of it in your 50 liter aquarium and you will strip out a lot of everything, everything fast and just, it's too clean. Oh, yeah. Okay. The oceans aren't clean. Yeah, what well, if? So then, that's still all beginner, intermediate, and fenced. Yeah, all yeah. those products. All of them, yeah. So then, but the only ones I'd say the advanced are the individual bottles. The traces we just looked through. Yeah, I could it. The uh, yeah, the individual trace elements of all of them. There's about fifteen or twenty bottles. Yeah, those ones there. I'll. The advanced ones at the ICP knowledge of an I with knowledge of an ICP test, so then you can start really dabbling into those. Um, and yeah, that that's the only time I'd recommend those. Okay, so now the the big one and it worked kind of got you your name really long. You posted the coral as a brand is the black label. Yeah, yeah. Whether that be Chroma Vibrance Energy or now just CBE. Yeah. So let's go through Chroma. You don't have to give any ingredients. Of yes, the they're all on the website. Well, they are now. Okay, okay. I thought that was pretty... Yeah, that's how it's for about. Oh, yeah, with the whole thing. It's DS thing, it's all... Uh, literally, the plan is black and white. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Chroma, let's go. It's vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin E, 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 but yet B group vitamins, omega, omega three fatty acids, and that's basically what uh, an extension of grow. So the the other product, amino and grow, there's two different bottles there. Yeah. Um, and uh, the CTE is an extension and a really souped up, amped up, hardcore version of the the grow side of it. Like so, it is a another vitamin based product that is used for enhanced growth and coloration. And do you dose it throughout the day, once a day, the morning, nine? Well, it's pretty versatile to be honest, but it's, I mean, going with the, the grow dosing, it is best to dose it out of the photo period because these vitamins are light sensitive as well. So the grow is also light sensitive. So if you're running a lot of UV light in your aquarium lights, we can burn that out. It's, um, it's not gonna lose it all, but you will lose slight effectiveness so okay. if you want to maximize it we do say to dose at night um but cve because if you've got a dosing pump that can dose throughout the day yeah that's fine i'll do that uh vibrance uh i get so yeah that was uh again that's the b group vitamins so chrome and vibrance are both up a bunch of different b group vitamins um yeah. and dose them together if you use the individual bottles yeah, yeah, definitely, yep. Okay. Um, and the energy component of CVE, so it was originally chroma vibrance and energy, and that's the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, that's the energy. Yeah. So it's exactly the same as CVE, same product. Yeah, same product, but um, it's made to be dosed on a dosing pump. Okay, is it and more cost-effective then if you get individual bottles? It's about the same. About the same. Yeah, it's about the same. Um but there is the added benefit of being able to go some mendozy pump. Okay. Set and forget. Walk away from it. Okay. And it no refrigeration. Yeah, not as well as no refrigeration. Long expiry. It doesn't have any seals or anything that can't be broken. Once it's broken, you have to finish it within six months, three months. Anything. Um, it's got pretty good shelf life. Okay. Um, but the general idea is to not contaminate it. Like, 
Uh, don't like, uh, for example, if you pouring it, pulling out the syringe or something, don't dip that syringe in the aquarium water and then dip it back even into the, uh, the bottle. Like you don't want to put outside inside yeah, because that's when we can get some bacteria growth in the bottle and really ruin it. That's with the main number grow as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have, yeah, okay, okay. So on the subject of black label, then, can you, I guess, made famous the chroma bath, and you did your videos years ago. Yeah, oh, they were even before I was around with that as well. But no, um, okay, yeah, that was bathing corals in essentially a coral dip made of chroma and vibrance, but not the energy because the energy. Uh, while now is uh, water soluble, yep. the previous energy is oil based. Okay. Uh, um, so the same product, but made in a different suspension. Um, so also the energy component didn't really do much in the bath. It's not really an effective, you know, dip. So you now I do want to dip it. Should the customer buy it? Chrome on fibers separate. CDE works. Um, but it's less effective than just chroma and vibrance together. Good. Um, and then we you put them in just a small bucket, some aquarium water, and put your coral in there. And any coral does it work better on soft gold? Um, well, if you recall, you're actually you're probably my favorite to see it on. Okay. Like, yeah, it's a pretty pretty intense reaction. So you then you put your so this is what we call the the juice bath or the sea the the, the chroma bath. It's got chroma and vibrance. You put about 10 drops of each in a liter of water or a bucket. You put your coral in there and then you add the drops. Give it a swirl around and then you, 10 minutes later, you take the coral out, put it back in the tank and then all that bucket water, put it in your tank too because it's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then you look at the color of the corals. We can also use this to heal tissue as well. So if you get a coral that's stung, we can give it, it's like kind of giving it uh, a banana bag is a you had of had the the B vitamin bag that you get when you're dehydrated and I have it in the yeah. IV and they call it a banana bag because it like a uh, a vitamin B was that before but yeah yeah have beef beef root vodka no the beer cans thing yeah it's a I've kissed it'll bring it yeah so uh, yeah so di have the direct infusion of vitamins directly to the coral in a concentrated amount so they really get a hit so not every day every week no well, every second day would be all right if you really want to do it so if you, if the coral coral is damaged or yeah yeah if it's damaged to do it it's not damaged and just, it's not really damaged to be honest there's no real reason to do it other than you just want to like see it souped up for a few days but it, it's not permanent like as it all it is but the really souped up look sort of fades if you don't give it the concentrated amounts but overall the entire aquarium is getting it anyway okay so and whenever you dose any of these things i mean i grow traces of cd do you or cd if i'm dozen cups it doesn't really matter but do you leave the flow on in the yeah. Yeah, tank either yeah, that don't care about that um these pro some protein skimmers actually so we're in our testing um of cde and the normal black labels, um, the old energy and even the new energy is actually designed to kind of drop your skimmer a little bit. So when it drops, the skimmer will make the, the fractionation in the skimmer, the bubbles drops. We've got less chance of the vibrance and uh, chrono being skimmed out. And they can get skimmed out, but it's not that much you want to really... You don't have to go and take the skimmer off to dose your products. But I would recommend having wave makers on where she yeah. dispersing it around and either redistribute it. Yeah. yeah. And can you mix these with your foods if you're tired of feeding corals? Uh, in small amounts. I, I would I wouldn't be going and putting concentrated concentrated amounts, yeah. Okay. Um especially not amino acids either, like uh, amino acids are acids. Does that Adam in a concentrated form and can damage your coral. Okay. And speaking of feeding, we spoke about it before. The gauge of a coral feeding. I'm a real font, the response. Yeah. Yeah. Visual response. What is that to it? You. 
Um, but yeah, so uh, the gauging an actual coral feeding response, uh, first of all, you the the tentacles they're up, they're wailing around, they're happy. Uh, as in the the feeding tentacles, I mean, not the normal ones. So they corals kind of invert themselves and yeah. to become to capture prey or floating particles, if you call that prey. Um, so having your coral invert itself and expose these feeding tentacles is a fantastic feeding response. Uh, another feeding response is seeing the the tentacles actively grab things and and take them on like some types of food don't make that um respond in the fun spot like do yeah okay but yeah engaging a feeding response can be different across a bunch of corals too um uh some feeding responses actually look like a stress response too so there's mesenterial filaments come out of acro when they feed yeah and yet some coralomorphs release these as a stress response so I guess just knowing individual corals as to what they're doing and stuff over the year, you, you pick it up over time. But generally, the feeding response to me is uh, uh, the, the feeding tentacles have to be out, they have to be grabbing food. Um, a slime coating is a good one too. Some type of corals will slime up to be able to allow particles to stick to the slime and make all the slime in. Um, so, yeah, range of feeding responses. And yeah. Like I said before, but just to say again, you don't have to dose these things whilst the coral is in vegan mode. Oh, yes. Yeah. So with your CV and everything, I wouldn't really expect much of a feeding response from those products. Um, they're, they're more of a absorbed through like okay. the tissue wall. So they're, you'll see them as they're, as they're added to the, the aquarium, you can see the green glow and everything from the bigger environments. Okay, but you've got the um, the the it's not doesn't really get smelt out as a food but a coral. Uh, I have had a few customers say I had a feeding response from it, and I think it's just coincidental that they may have added it around the t- same time they fed the fish or something. Okay, and so it shouldn't really generate a feeding response. I mean, great if it does. There are certain amino acids that we've trialed in the past that do generate an instant feeding response. Like it's almost instant. You put a drop of this in the corals. It's not even food. It's just a like a hormone that basically, or pheromone that makes them hungry. Um, so yeah, but I wouldn't expect CDE or any of the other black label uh, liquids to do that. But there is the black label food that will generate the feeding. That's the next thing. Yeah. Uh, so you and Christian. Yeah. Both work on the farm full time. Yeah. It's taken you a few years, obviously, for developing and testing. And now, as of like two months ago in Australia, yeah. which is, I think, where you test and release all your products first before yeah. you go overseas, similar to what yeah. Delilah does, you now have a coral food. Yeah. So what's, what's that all about? Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, it was released a couple of months ago. It's in the UK now, I think, somewhere to the States. Um, but yeah, the coral food is... Based tried and tested on the farm, we've developed it based on uh, a lot of different ingredients that we've uh, uh, been using on the coral farm. Uh, and those uh, ingredients, they're all whole, um, whole ingredients. There's nine of them. There's phytoplankton, uh, is my favourite one in there. So start with the favourite. Um, I think phytoplankton generates one of the best feeding responses you could possibly have like it it just really gets the corals out there and hungry Good. and then there is um chimaris rotifers cyclops uh, uh, red krill plankton crustaceans and yeah i can't think of how they cut full with the top lads are in all the spot yeah. and, uh, but yeah there's nine total ingredients there's no other they're all creatures that are freeze dried or um dried okay creatures living yeah. crustaceans um and they're either whole or blended like the cyclops and rotifers are whole the phytoplankton is of course whole because it's a powder yep um and the others are blended up to various different grades to suit different caramels uh, and, and the reason that it's i've chosen or well, we've chosen to do a powdered food instead of a pelletized food is 
over the years of feeding corals. And one of my favorite things is to do is to feed corals. It's just that, uh, watching your corals eat is, you know, it's just sad as hell. So that in fire, watching them suck food in and yeah. Yeah. So I, I've always loved doing that. And you tired of feed. Yeah. And after years on what went in it and, and yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, we get in the, the process of feeding it and everything. And so, yeah, how we develop the, the food to be a powdered food or out of different grades is over the years of feeding these corals is noticing that a pelletized or chunky foods and that old, uh, old thing about giving you large polyp stony corals like your dash and your scollies a big piece of prawn i've never seen those corals eat these chunks of meat um small pellets maybe but big prawns they're spat out you feed a prawn to an anemone and it's you just find it floating your hand and you fish it they don't eat it they just spit it out but what they do is a powdered food and they digest it i think it's because they the smaller pellets are easy to digest. It's much easier on that coral to digest the food. So we've moved away from, I mean, I've always, when we were developing this food, which we now use in bulk on the farm, before we were doing that and during the development of it, we are always using blended up seafood, going to the fish market and getting seafood. And it was working, but we were going through a lot of blenders because <laughs> it's gross <laughs> uh, but um, we needed the fine particles because corals weren't digesting anything big um, and when they're not digesting it it's being spat out and it's rotting and it's then causing nutrient issues which are back down the start of the chain of the yeah. how we approach the reef system so okay so this is a powder food like I said a few different size particles and map this to accommodate your larger polyp yeah. corals, which can handle just a little bit size of a little bit bigger particle. And then right down to the tiny stuff like cyclops, which is like dust, man and phytoplankton, which is dust. Okay. And that's for your SPS with the tiny pole. Okay. Um, so that's basically the whole coral scissors raid with from primary care, which is kill bread and butter every day. And that is beginner, intermediate, advanced. Everybody needs it. Yeah. And that's for the skeletal build of the yeah. coral. And then you discussed amino and grow, dosing it morning and night. Yeah. And that is for the fleshy part, but the coral. Yeah, the tissue. Yeah, all basically our skin and muscles and depth. Yeah. Yep. And that is again beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yep. All corals need it. Yep. There was nutrient control which is your carbon, zeolite, uh, and can nitrate up, phosphate up, possibly the balancing app, the ratio that yeah. the user prefers. Yep. The fourth was the traces, which is advanced, mainly only, intermediate to advanced after an ICP test. Yep. Yeah, to always recommend an ICP test before we do those uh, okay. individual elements because you don't want to be blind nursing. Yeah. A lot of those, especially if those Zuzabdele regulators that like chromium and nickel and cobalt yeah. and uh, those when we can bleach our corals unintentionally by adding those if you don't know what you're doing to them. So okay. not to be afraid of them, but yep. you just need to not be blind dosing. And then your uh, black label, CME. Yep. And that's food. It's a black label too. Food's part of the black. Okay. Yeah. And is that beginner, intermediate, advanced? Is it a mature tank? How old's your tank when you should start dosing of CME I'm and feeding the, the new food? And the third, we can start from like okay, day one, that's beginner, intermediate, advanced. But I, I would probably recommend to you, your CBE uh, plus should, uh, is uh, to be more on the intermediate. But I mean, your beginners can certainly use it once there's a few corals in there. But I wouldn't be using CBE. I wouldn't be dosing it. I wouldn't recommend it to someone with just a few corals. I feel it's just a waste. Like you can save your money and bite more corals first and and then put the battle there when you want to kick the colors up a notch and kick the growth up a notch. So, and is that part of the tissue size or the flesh? Yeah, but a part of the, the tissue in the color formation. So uh, yeah, or the protein. Yeah, the chroma, uh, chroma proteins, fluorescent proteins. Yeah. Um, that we're really going to help the the colors develop and pop by using CBE. Okay. So one of the worst questions that I get 
entered is why is your product better? How does your product compare to another? Yeah. Head of stuff? And my answer is generally all the products are quite good. Yeah. And all the products will get the job done. You see beautiful reef tanks running the Lord gig, other gear, running Coral Essentials, running other additives. It's up to the user. But so instead of saying why something is better, you have a coral farm that you yourself control 30,000 liters, 8,000 yeah. gallons. It's, a prob- it's about probably about 30,000 liters now. So. Okay. so why do you think, so why do you do the things you do and have your theories around CBE uh, and Amino and Grow, uh, not compared to other brands, but what works for you? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think the, the feedback that we get from the end users, which we have, we're, we're quite hands on with, uh, with our end users as well. We've got our Coral Essentials support group, which you can ask questions even on Facebook. On Facebook yeah. Uh, and we've got that there, which we're on almost all the time. Yeah. Uh, we don't get a lot of sleep. Um, so between Coral Fungi and, and, and testing products and answering questions, we're happy to help where we can. We've also got lots of. Uh, resources. The Coral Essentials website is a fantastic resource full of calculators and mm. uh, tools that you can use to translate your ICP test into uh, dosage rates because these numbers mean nothing until they become a dosage rate. So um, we've got the tools, we've got the help um, without sort of blowing too much steam on ourselves. We've experienced in reefing and the coral farming so we we can help in most situations um and the products themselves that tried tested and developed on the farm as you said before so so let's go into more detail then um your particular uh composition of cbe compared to other brands yeah why have you chosen your list of products in this all the traces and, and CBE and CBE. Yeah, CBE. So uh, CBE is a is vitamin based product. There's no aminos in there, which makes it a bit different from some other yellow liquids. Um, and the reason we don't use aminos is because they don't really mix in vitamins. So long term, you might actually see some brown flakes if we put like amino acids in our vitamins. You get a, a brown flake and it's not really soluble and it's not doesn't really become useful to the coral if it's not soluble. So um, it just settles at the bottom. Settles at the bottom of it. And yeah, we don't have seen. Yeah. yeah. So we, we choose to keep the amino separate in the amino bottle. Um, and that way it's easy usable because you're dosing it to the tank from the amino bottle and you're dosing your vitamins from grow and CDE out of that bottle but as they're separate. Then that really mix in the aquarium because you're diluting them down with your aquarium bottle. But when you're confining them to a bottle and they settle out and that's in our testing, we didn't want that for our own users. So mm-hmm. um, it's just one more hassle. So yeah, keep them separate. And you know, we already had the amino product. Yeah. And it's quite inexpensive as well. Or some, like a yeah. hundred bill of or something. It's Yeah. It's not as cons- like it needed to be added to it anyway. And it was more more trouble than it was worth to combine aminos and vitamins together. So Okay. So your the coral essential primary care is what's called an equal part dosing. Yeah. Meaning that it's nothing's perfect. It's very hard to balance these. Things. Yeah. But generally yeah. they should all run out at the same time, generally. But what happens if the uptake of one particular tank or aquarium in magnesium, for instance, is a lot less than in calcium or alkalinity. What happens with the dilution rate and the ratio of the traces in each? It's a good question. Yeah. So uh, you don't want to be, uh, if you find that you need to do a massive adjustment, uh, let whether it be an ICP result you've got back, but whether you're using your home test kits which uh, to test. Uh, first of all, I'd probably say if you've got something that's wildly different, Double check that you tested correctly and that the, the test kit's in date. As many of you need traces or the main... No, the main one. Three, yeah, that'd be good. So if you're testing, for example, magnesium, yep. uh, just double check that your test kit is in date and you use the correct method because it's very easy to forget it a bit. Thing. Side track, did it. An extra drop of your reagent and all of a sudden you've got a really wacky result. So first of all, check that. Yep. 
the next uh, thing is to check your salinity and check that your uh, refractometer or everything is calibrated correctly because salinity affects these elements really, really strongly. So if it's your salinity is too high or too low, these values don't actually add up. So one thing, when someone comes up to us with a, a problem of these um, macro elements like calcium and magnesium and alkalinity out, the, a lot of the time their salinity is just out of whack as well. And, um, and also, after we've done those tests, if the salinity is right, with test kits right, I like to make sure that they're not just doing a big glug, glug, glug of those products in to make that adjustment. If we do find out that it, yes, indeed was low of magnesium, we don't recommend to just like tip the bottle in to get it back up there. And we recommend the magnesium up, which is the powdered range of the primary care. So you can get them in liquid or the powder. Yeah, the powders don't have trace elements in them. That's what we use the individuals for later. So the raw powder, uh, which we can use the calculator on the Coral Essentials website, where you can work all of this out to be, uh, I say work out, but it's literally spells there for you on the website. When you do it, if, you're, if you've got a low magnesium reading, you could add the raw powdered magnesium with no trace elements. And that's avoiding you getting a trace element spike. Okay. And yeah, is that a thing? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you are just glugging in more of something to buffer off and adjust a level because it was wildly wrong, yeah. or if it will be wrong, you will adjust trace elements because of the primary care in a liquid range, they have the trace element. Yeah. Okay, so to so balance the numbers, you would say to, um, if, if you're under, if, if you need to dose more of one of the primary care, yeah, and count out, mate. Opt for the powder, the powder range. Yeah, catch on. Yeah, that particular. Yeah. And you can mix that up yourself. It takes like a few minutes, literally. Like yeah. it's, you send a jug. It's it's really easy to do. And is magnesium generally the one that kind of it, falls off a bit? It usually is. Uh, uh, and alkalinity too, actually. Yeah. Um, it, it's uh, because people tend to keep their alkalinity at different levels. Um, a lot of salts have a automatically higher um alkalinity level and so and they want to maintain that these customers want to maintain that so they use more alkalinity which is fine um it doesn't matter like it eventually evens out those means that maybe you go to your lfs and buy just alkalinity that week yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. okay yeah and also don't be chasing numbers it's like one of my favorite things to say is that if we're uh, if your if your aquarium wants to sit at a certain level, if your magnesium is always currently low, but it wants to sit stably low, I wouldn't be worried too much because you could chase that number eight for weeks and weeks and weeks or forever or whatever. And if you're keeping on adding these uh, extra amounts of even the powdered magnesium range or calcium or whatever you need to add, and it drops straight back down again, then you're kind of chasing your tail in it, but if it wants to sit at a nice stable level, stability is where you actually want to be. So low is okay, stability is even better. So now that you're in the UK, Europe, yeah, and some colder parts of the US, yeah, it happens to be in Sydney as well. Actually, you notice that the ALK employs at the counter, but one of your yeah, I'm looking at the ticket with crystallizes and it. Gets a bit, yeah. yeah. And so, so is that a spa, or well, what do you do? No, it's fine. Um, if you can, if you're in a cold climate, uh, or you had a, a really chilly week, um, then you'll notice the the premix alkalinity or, or carbonate up. It's mixed to maximum saturation. Like it, that means when you uh, dissolve the powder into water, you can't actually dissolve any more in it. it it's completely saturated there's no more powder can fit in there and that's the value for the customer the efficiency and we, we gives you everything in there you can't have more but the problem with that is uh it's not really a problem well what if we've made this up in the tropics of queensland it's a nice hot climate and the temp warmer temperatures actually help these 
uh, the crystals stay in solution and stay liquid. When you refrigerate or chill them down or live in a cold climate, or even the transit of being in the back of a truck or in a freight to the com- uh, to the country that it's going to, those bottles can get cold and the solution inside can crystallize. The solution is really easy. Just literally run a hot sink of water and you tap and sit the bottle in it and it'll condense back down. If you are continuing to have this problem, even after you've liquefied them again in a hot sink of water, just by warming it up to give you the shake, and what we recommend is dilute the product in half. So it's a 2.75 liter or a 10 liter or a 500 ml bottle. Whatever the volume of the bottle you have is, double it. Grab the RO. So if it's a 2.75, grab 2.75 liters of RO water. Mix them together. But you've halved the solution strength. So the dose rate is now double. So if you were dosing 10 mil, then you were having a crystallization issue. And then you diluted it by half, you're now dosing 20 ml a day. That's really good advice. Yeah. Primary care, amino grow, CBE, um, the uh, nitrate up, phosphate up, carbon, zeolite. But there's also traces in the individual bottles, A, B, and C. Yeah. Do you use that with the primary care because they have traces? I know you definitely meant you. Yeah. Uh, explain about about the carbon up calcium up and you add it to those yep but can you use it with the well first explain traces a b c yeah how let's move on to their use of their uses yeah so trace a b and c are the mix of uh, all of the trace elements or nearly all of the trace elements that we use um on the coral farm and they're mixed in the ratios that we've found beneficial to the corals and the the processes within the coral, whether that be uh, the the elements that use of tissue growth or zooxanthellae regulation, uh, helping make new zooks or getting rid of the old zooks or all these biological processes and the things that corals do while we sleep and we have no idea, well, most people have no idea what these corals are doing. These elements are helping that process along. So that's trace A, B, C, and it's all mixed into three bottles, A, B, and C. And we generally just dose that about one to two drops per hundred liters a day. Is that on top of the primary care? Can Not we... really, no. So those ones there, uh, if you're doing, say, a, a Randy's recipe type mix mm. and you've got calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium on a dosing pump and you're using Randy's recipe, which is totally fine to do, um, a lot of we don't recommend to change things up broken. So if you want to add trace levels to that, ABC, it's done. An ICP test every now and then, and we can adjust that dosing. You might need a little bit more trace A or a little bit more trace B or something like that. And that's a really simple way to get your traces in. And then if you want to fine tune it again, we've got the individual elements of each one in that bottle. Yeah, yeah really fine tune with. So primary care is your easiest option. Yep. For ever it's it's easy to be around. So, yeah. But at the same time that's what we recommend if you're I have no idea what I'm doing. Just add that type of had some primary gear, yeah. cow alchemy and yeah, plus traces. Okay. But for the more experienced user or some that is becoming more experienced and the hobby is quite expensive, would you suggest or it, it should be a lot cheaper to buy the powders? Yeah, and with your calculator. Yeah, on the Coral Essentials website, add the traces A, B, C. Well, you don't even need the calculator to add those. Um, yeah, it's just a recipe uh, on the Coral Essentials website. So the powders are the calcium up, magnesium up, carbon up. You that's it. The pure element. Yep, pure elements of all of the powder that makes the primary range. Yep, and we you mix them up with water. Okay, man. Well, yeah, under water, yeah. And then you get trace A, B, C, boron, bromine, and potassium. So there's six bottles there and even with the cost of the six bottles and the three buckets of powder it's significantly cheaper than buying the primary care pre-made but you just mix it on at home mix it on the kitchen bench or yep. wherever you like and it, it takes you a simple line yeah and there is risk of error you use it in error very minimal like it is it's hard to okay. yeah baking your cakes harder Okay, it's it's literally just mix powder with water and pull 
you grab a little syringe and pull some trace element out of those bottles and and uh, the bottles actually last you five rounds of mixing you know traces and yeah the trace elements a b and c they last you five rounds of mixing okay so you they they're that concentrated so you only add uh 20 percent of each bottle so i have used other brands in the past to do this yeah and the instructions were quite poorly written i needed to kind of think about it if i'm going to do this then I don't want to have to think about it. The Coral Essentials website, yeah, coralessentials.com.au, gives you, uh, I don't know, you send it slightly calculated, but there's a half a calculation, one lead up to the recipe. Oh, uh, okay. Because the, the powders are pre weighed for you. You don't even need the kitchen scales or anything. All you need is a little syringe to be able to measure out at the bot of the blue bottles, the A, B, and C, and okay, potassium and everything. But yeah, okay. But the powders are pre weighed. Uh, and you just get a, a 20 liter bucket with it and then you sort of fill that to the, the 10 liter mark and tip the entire contents of that bucket in there, the powder and dump, mess it up with a drill or a uh, wooden spoon. Or one cow that makes 10 liters. Yeah. Okay. That's a, yeah. Four point. Okay. Cool. I didn't know that either. Yeah. The buckets are different sizes, but don't let that fool you. Fool you. They don't actually make a different volume at the end. Yeah. That it's, uh, it's the equal part. It's equal part. Yeah. Okay. You'll have it. You'd have three buckets, and you put all of the powders in there. And you go across the three buckets. Yep. To the ten liter mark. Yep. Yeah. All instructions are on the website. Super simple. And um, I mean, I I've done a, a demo and a, a reef show just gone, and uh, I mixed the entire three buckets in under five minutes. Okay. All right. In ten liters of water for yeah. each yeah. individual. Yeah. And ten liters will last most people a long time. Yeah. With the Traces A, B, C, and what are the other elements? And after boron, bromine, and potassium, and that makes this uh, mix practically the same as our primary care liquid range. So, what many people don't know is that Coral Essentials have a very easy to use calculator up on their website, and we've got Shane Danager here to walk us through that process. Take it away, Shane. Well, first of all, you want to go to the Coral Essentials homepage and uh so that's coralessentials.com.au and on the top left hand corner there's a three little bars there you want to tap that and go to calculators and on the side menu there on the left hand side you're going to see the coral essentials calculator there's also an icp calculator but we want to click the coral essentials calculator now let's just say you've got your icp test just back and you've had your potassium slightly low so we're going to click the drop down box on the very top search in that and we're going to select coral power potassium which is just down the bottom there and then the next one we have to do is we have to enter our aquarium size in liters so for argument's sake let's just say you've got a really nice big aquarium and it's 1000 liters now your icp test result if it came back too low and uh, you're sitting at 370, so we'll sit put 370 there in the in the existing level in parts per million. So that's what your ICP result came back at 330, uh, 370. And now you want to enter in your desired level, and we want to bump that up to 400 ppm. So based on the volume of your aquarium 1000 liters the product that you're using the level that you had and the level that you want there it is you have 300 drops to put into your aquarium and that will bump 1000 liters from 370 to 400 ppm and that's as easy as that so let's do another one um yeah as of now let's try so first of all, a thousand layers is inclusive of the sump. Yeah, you have to have total water of total water, and that's that's pretty easy to work out for you on Okay, I get a volume calculator length by with by height in centimeters divided by a thousand. Okay, simple. So now let's just do one more, pick another element, just to go through one more time. Yeah, uh, all right. So we're we're here at the top again. So we're going to go. To Coral power potassium we just did, so I'm going to hit that drop down box and we'll pick another element. Um, let's go strontium because that's another important element there. Again, we're going to keep our aquarium size at 1000 liters. 
And we're going to scroll down to the ICP result or the existing level. You could have tested that yourself on a home test kit. Uh, let's just say your level is six parts per million in strontium, which is quite low. And we want to get that back up to eight parts per million. So done. And there is 40 drops of uh, coral power strontium in 1,000 litres will raise it from 6 to 8 parts per million. Perfect. I think that's that's it. Yeah, that's easy. That's that easy. It's cool. so simple. It's literally three boxes uh, of numbers and whatever product you want to use. That's based off your Coral Essentials product. Yeah, that only works with the Coral Essentials products. Okay. And it's coralessentials.com.au and... That's it. Easy. Done.